What you're about to see is what it's like to experience one of the best long haul premium economy products in the world. And I hate to say this, but if they're not careful, they might just end up as one of the worst. Okay, this one is going to be a doozy. If you don't know who I am, my name is Scott, and I write super nerdy airline reviews, <laughs> ones that only weirdos like me can appreciate, over on sandspotter.com. I'm here at Terminal 3 at the Tokyo Haneda Airport to scratch something off my list that I've been wanting to try for a very long time. ANA 777-300ER Premium Economy Long Haul to San Francisco. The best part? I didn't even do this on purpose. I had actually booked this as economy class, but when I checked in this evening, they handed me a boarding pass for premium economy instead. I didn't argue with them, <laughs> nor did I ask any questions. Maybe they made a mistake, or maybe it had something to do with my Star Alliance gold status. Don't know, don't care. Current time is about 9.30 p.m., so I've got some time to kill before boarding is scheduled to begin. It was actually during this moment of inactivity that I discovered something really awesome. Did you know that ANA offers lounge access to passengers booked in premium economy? How cool is that? I'm not aware of any other airline that does this, although I'm sure they exist. So you're darn right that I took advantage of that opportunity. The food here in the Terminal 3 ANA Lounge is excellent, by the way, so it's well worth a visit if you have the time. I recommend the curry. <laughs> it was excellent. Now, I will admit that it was a bit of a daring choice prior to an 11-hour flight, but I have a weakness when it comes to this sort of stuff. In hindsight, I probably should have eaten more of it, considering what I know now about what kind of food and how much of it is going to be served on tonight's flight. So, as you'll see later in the video, I was actually kicking myself for having so much adult-like restraint. Live and learn, I guess. This being my fourth ANA flight in less than seven days, I already knew what to expect during the boarding process. It's going to be calm, organized. The gate agents will actually be happy to see us and will wish us well on our journey tonight. They will not tolerate any pushing. There will be no shoving. It'll be yet another pleasant boarding process orchestrated by professionals who take great pride in their work. Then, once on board, the cabin crew will be there to assist you in any way possible, doing it with a smile, making sure that the path to your assigned seat is as stress-free as possible. And finally, when you do arrive at your seat, you will be completely blown away because, well, it'll be a lot better than what you were expecting. Yeah, these premium economy seats are no joke. I'd even go as far as to say that they are the best premium economy seats that I've ever tried. This looks really nice, doesn't it? There are storage bins everywhere, and all of the materials are top-notch. Also, not only do you get a free pair of slippers, there's a full-size pair of noise-canceling headphones as well. Legroom? Yeah, <laughs> this'll do. This'll do nicely. Quite nicely indeed. Especially with the footrests, which maintain their adjustability even if you have stuff placed underneath the seat in front of you. And the video screens. These are easily as large as what you'll see in many long-haul business class products these days. And they're bright, too, though that did cause some issues later on in the flight. Anyway, did I win the lottery with this upgrade, or what? It actually had me thinking that we needed to push off the gate, like, quick, before they realized their mistake and kicked my sorry butt back to economy class. Flying time over to San Francisco is going to be a very short 9 hours and 16 minutes. Given the fact that I was mentally prepared to do this in economy class, you'd be correct in assuming that I was disappointed to find out that we'd be riding the jet stream all the way across the Pacific tonight. 
Those of you who read my review of this flight over on Sandspotter.com are already aware of my preference of making this last as long as possible. The rest of you? It'll be obvious fairly quick. Given the fact that it's past 11 p.m. and I'm ready for sleep, that isn't going to stop me from telling you that these are some of the best video screens that I've ever experienced in long-haul premium economy. The catalog of content is very impressive as well, but I already knew that having flown ANA 777-300ER economy just a week ago. Not only that, when many other airlines are only providing cheap little earbuds in premium economy, <laughs> ANA went all out with these bad boys. They sounded great, despite my oddly shaped head. Anyway, it was the quality and brightness of the screen that impressed me the most. This is every bit as good as business class. And yes, they are highly adjustable and still very easy to see when the person in front of you reclines their seat the full amount. Speaking of seat recline, I highly recommend putting on your slippers as soon as possible. Because basically, <laughs> there ain't no way you're going to get into these things when the person in front of you is flat in your lap. So, what do you think? This seems pretty nice so far, doesn't it? Although there were no amenity kits, the cabin crew did come by with eye masks and toothbrushes, so that was cool. With everything being this good so far, just imagine what the first meal service is going to be like. Unfortunately, I was perhaps being a bit too ambitious with my own imagination. Remember what I was saying earlier about this not being a perfect experience? This sandwich and bottle of water is one half of the reason why. On one hand, I completely understand the rationale for a limited meal service for a flight departing at 11 p.m. On the other hand, it's only 11 p.m., and I could have easily shoveled down a full meal if one was offered. A mayonnaise sandwich, though? No thanks. And even if this was something that was appealing to me, this looks more like a mid-flight snack than it does a first meal in long-haul premium economy. Whatever. Piling more stuff onto all that curry in my belly probably wouldn't have been a good idea anyway. At least the dinner bag contained a little package of really good Japanese-style snacks. They weren't very filling, but they were delicious. The best part? Having flown ANA Long Haul Economy just last week, I already know where I can get more. Okay, back to the good stuff. Although the meal was a total letdown, I'm finding it really hard to say anything bad about this lavatory located between the premium economy and economy cabins. It's roomy in here, and I like it. Oh, and here's that stash of snacks that I mentioned earlier. So basically, even if you didn't like what they were serving for dinner, you're not actually going to starve. Back at my seat now, and it's time to get settled in for a few hours of sleep. Seat recline is fantastic, by the way. No, they don't go completely flat, but it's a lot steeper than the recline you'll get back in economy class. And it makes a really big difference, too. I slept like a baby in the sea, <laughs> at least halfway across the Pacific. The allure of that snack bar was too great to resist, though, as well as the opportunity to spend more time in that awesome loo. Good morning. Never mind the fact that it's actually 1 p.m. local time, but the breakfast service will be starting momentarily. I think I was more surprised than disappointed by this breakfast menu. I can't say this with 100% certainty, but I am fairly certain that this is exactly the same food that they were serving back in economy class. It's not like I found this to be unappealing or anything. This actually looks like a fairly decent airline breakfast in my opinion. The problem is that I was expecting something slightly more premium than the food I was served in ANA Long Haul Economy last week. It was good, and slightly Japanese, but mostly disappointing. I can't 
can't think of any other way to wrap up this video than to say that this was one of the most interesting airline experiences that I've had in the past several years. Hold on a second. <laughs> I just discovered that there's actually a retractable leg rest in these seats. Dang it. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, back to what I was saying about this being really interesting. It's not because it was especially great or especially bad, but because it was actually both of those things. On one hand, these premium economy seats are nothing short of fantastic. Easily, hands down, without a doubt, the best long haul premium economy seats that I've ever experienced. On the other hand, what's up with the food? I didn't mind the abbreviated first meal service given the late departure time, but none of the food they served here in premium economy was any better than what they serve in economy class. I was surprised by that. Especially considering how much better the food was in economy class the last time that I flew ANA, which was back in 2014. Anyway, welcome to San Francisco. We've arrived four minutes late, which isn't much to scoff at considering the science and physics behind what just happened over the past 11 hours. And if you're wondering if I'd be reluctant to do this again because of the food situation, just know that yes, ANA is still one of my favorite airlines and I'll definitely be back <laughs> in business class. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.